Hello friends, Yossi here. Today we're going to talk about buying properties in Costa Rica. As you know, I'm a Toronto realtor and recently I've started representing developers in Costa Rica. You do need to be approved by the developer to represent them, and I am, and I'll be happy to help you get a property in Costa Rica. But basically, different kinds of properties in Costa Rica, very similar to Canada, uh, but there are some changes. So here are some tips. First thing, the prices are better, but they are in USD, US dollars, okay? So you can pick up a condo in the 200s, and when I say 200s, at 200 USD. Uh, you can pick up luxury condos from the 300s and up, and you can pick up homes from the 400s. Now, when I say these numbers, I mean brand new developments. So very similar to pre-construction uh, like in Canada. However, Costa Rica, you can also buy used homes. The problem with used homes is that, is that it's really hard to manage. It's not in a development. It's not in a gated community. You're going to have to do everything by yourself. That's why my focus is on investment properties in Costa Rica that are fully developed by a developer. They're mostly gated communities. They're safe. They're easy. They're managed. These properties, whether they start at 200, 300, 400, 500,000 US dollars, um, they're going to be brand new. They're going to be managed and they're very easy to purchase. Now, when I say managed, those are always an option. So you don't have, you can, you can buy a property in Costa Rica, whether it's a condo or a home. A when I say home, I mean a house uh, to live in yourself. You don't have to rent it to anyone. You don't have to put in the rental pool. You can do whatever you want. But all these developments that I choose to represent uh, will have a property management option. And the reason is, is because if you don't live in Costa Rica full time, you want someone to manage it for you. And that makes it a lot easier. In addition, when the property is managed for you, it can be rented for you as well. And then you can benefit from the cash flow. So it is possible to invest in Costa Rica for way less price than it would cost you in Toronto and make money on the property. Now, obviously, that will change product by product, condo by condo, home by home. But the properties that we're looking at and the property we we're working with developers um, are good cash flow properties. Uh, the, the deposit structures are pretty similar to what you'll find in Canada, but it's not like in Canada, you know, like it'll be 5% with the offer and then another 5 another 5 Those are different. Costa Rica is a bit different because each developer could be a little different. For example, the NIA property, the NIA development, which is a massive property in Liberia, Okay, deposits are only fifteen or twenty thousand USD. So if you want to convert to Canadian dollar, at about thirty or thirty-five percent. So you're looking at say twenty to thirty thousand Canadian dollars, give or take. Some homes uh, may be actually much higher deposits. In other developments, could be fifty or eighty percent. It really depends on the developer. Same time, you can get a mortgage in Costa Rica as a Canadian. And most of these mortgages will be give or take 50-50. So you'll put, after your deposit, when you get the keys, you put the, you bring up your total deposit to about 50%. And that's, of course, based on that they got to approve you, which is a similar process. They want to see that you have income. They want to see your credit score things of that nature, and then you can get a local bank in Costa Rica to approve you and to give you a mortgage. More is that the Bank of Nova Scotia is also active in the real estate scene in Costa Rica, so there is a potential there, and I'll connect you with the right people when you buy with me to see what your options are for mortgage and financing in Costa Rica, whether it's through a Latin American bank, a Costa Rica bank, or Canadian bank like Scotia in Costa Rica. Okay. Now, the nice thing about Costa Rica is that it's got two seasons. It's got rainy season and dry season. The dry season is give or take from October to May, six months, and the rainy season or the wet season are the rest of the months. And what do you know? Uh, just happens that when it's coldest in Canada, it's the driest and warmest in Costa Rica, which works really well. That means that for snowbirds, for
for people who just want to spend a few months out of Canada but do want to enjoy the amazing summers we have here, and Toronto summers are the best in my opinion, um, you can actually do that. You can use your home, your property, whether the condo or the home, in Costa Rica during the winters. You can send family members there, you can send your friends there, it doesn't matter. <clears throat> and when you're not occupying the unit yourself, you can put it back in the management pool and the management will take what it needs to rent and manage the property for you, give you the financials and put the money in your bank account. And yes, you'll have to go through a similar process of opening um, in Costa Rica. You get all the papers done. Uh, they'll open you and this is part of the process, part of the service. It's all going to be done for you. You'll need uh, Costa Rican papers, not immigration papers, but the real estate papers. So they have their own process and they're very, the Costa Ricans and, and other Latin countries that I've visited are very, very accurate and they're very precise. So this is really good. They have a title system. They do not have an MLS system, but they have a title system. They have brilliant lawyers. And generally speaking, you can expect the quality of the service you get from Costa Rican real estate people, from Costa Ricans lawyers, and the my compadres, uh, the real estate people that I work with, the, um, the developers people, are very, very good and professional. So that's good. Um, the fun part about investing in Costa Rica, of course, is that you own uh, an investment property that also fun. So currently, while I make this video, which is March 2023, I represent three developments. The first one is called Riverland. Riverland is in Tamarindo, and it's a collection of 64 homes, standalone homes. They're gorgeous homes, the modern, the link is below. Take a look, there's a whole webinar I made about it. And those homes started about in the 400s USD and go up to the 500s. And those are absolutely beautiful homes. Uh, Tamarindo is kind of like the main, or one of the main tourist towns uh, on the West Coast, on the Pacific. It's in Guanacaste, the province, the state of Guanacaste. Uh, it, it's absolutely marvelous. I really like it. And there's a whole webinar you can watch. The second one is in Liberia. I mentioned before, it's called Nia, N-Y-A, Nia. That is a massive, massive development. Uh, it's going to have... 4,000 homes, mostly condo apartments. In the center, this development is about 2,200 acres. It's massive. In the center, there's a massive lagoon. It's an eight-acre lagoon. That lagoon is run by a professional company that does nothing but lagoons called Crystal Lagoons. It's a freshwater lagoon. You can swim there. You can do water sports, all these wonderful things. They're going to have white sandy beaches. And the prices there start in about 300s, okay? There are many phases, 4,000 units. That's a long, long-term investment. So if I were you, take a look at NIA. If you want something completely managed and done for you, this project is run by a company called Gensler. Gensler, that is a massive, massive. Look them up on Google, Gensler, G-E-N-S-L-E-R. They specialized in massive, massive projects all over the world, okay? Um, Nia is going to have everything, a whole village. Uh, I believe there's even a Starbucks in there, restaurants, cafes, uh, sports rentals, uh, tours, nature tours. Costa Rica is a green nature country. Everything you can think about. So think of... Uh, maybe a, a Collingwood or a Blue Mountain, but massive, brand new, modern, well-designed, completely green. That's Nia. And more information in the webinar. The third one is called Naomi. And that is another development with prices starting at 200s, 200s. And I have a webinar for that done for you shortly, probably this week. So just take a look below for the links. Now, just like in Toronto, these properties come and go. Once they're sold, they're sold. You can't make any more. And, <coughs> excuse me, Costa Rica real estate prices have been going up, especially because of COVID, year after year by about 20 to 25%. With the max value appreciation is happening in Guanacaste. 
on the West Coast on, at the Pacific. And the reason is, is because that's where everyone want to be. So if you want to go on the East Coast by Caribbean, it's going to be a lot cheaper, but you're not going to have the infrastructure and the order and those large communities, which are completely run, centrally run, managed for you. That is why we focus on the West Coast of Costa Rica. The other thing, it's really easy to get to. You can fly to Liberia or you can fly to the main airport of Costa Rica and then just drive down, take a shuttle, uh, limo, whatever you like. Okay, so this is it for this video. There's many, many more videos coming in about Costa Rica. Just remember Costa Rica, in my opinion, is the next place to invest. It is not the most expensive. It is definitely not the cheapest, but it provides very reasonable prices for excellent architecture, value, design, safety, green nature, and all the amenities you would like as a visitor or as an investor. Okay, Yossi Kaplan, Toronto and Costa Rica. Thank you very much. I'll see you in the next video. Any questions, send them. Yossi Kaplan.